Happy Friday, folks, and welcome back to New Wave Traders. In today's video, we're gonna be diving into just Bitcoin, taking a look at the last three videos that I released over the last seven days, and how the range here that we've been dealing with unraveled, and how from my predictions, it ended up into a trade strategy that I posted inside of our group coaching Discord that banked a one to 32 risk to reward ratio trade. I'm gonna show you guys how I did that and the secret behind getting those types of trade setups, and then we're gonna dive into how I messed it. So if that interests you, then definitely make sure to grab a drink, grab some popcorn, pull the seat up to the desk and let's dive into it, you guys. All right, so first off seven days ago, been talking about this ABC towards the upside for 48K for a while. Why did we have such high probability and certainty that we we're gonna get an ABC towards the upside like this? The answer is, to give you guys that secret sauce all around here, is that anytime we get five waves, it's always the start or the end of something. So if I can get a five wave move off of a low, and it does not qualify as the end of something, well, then I'm only left with one thing that it could be. It's gotta be the start, which means that the next question that we've gotta navigate is how do I get an in? And that's gonna be where this sideways range really takes place, a regular flat, a zigzag, doesn't matter. We're just looking for it to range sideways, and then we're looking for that entry intuition towards the upside. But we can have really, really strong conviction that because this five wave only qualifies as the start of something, that it will get another partner leg to it, because what starts with five wave has to end five wave, right? There's not a pattern that exists where something starts with five waves and then ends with three waves. That pattern doesn't exist in at least not yet. And so we can create these rules around that allow us to navigate this market a little bit more uh, precisely. So that was what we talked about seven days ago, ABC towards the upside. We're basically dealing with this range here and I'd highlighted fake pump, Bitcoin technical analysis using a superior LA wave system. So fake pump, why fake pump? Because we're getting ready to go into a weekend and anytime we pump into a weekend, which quote unquote, it's Friday, you guys, we were pumping into a weekend, we go sideways. We do basically nothing. It's just a consolidation period. Uh, where the big dogs don't play around in. So that's what I'm expecting for this weekend as well. And it's what I was expecting back here. And that's exactly what this ended up doing. It's continuing to consolidate. That then brings us into our Wednesday video here. And this was posted four days ago, okay? And we were looking, we were consolidating. We had an ABC here looking for a drop down and then looking for a pivot back up. And this would be a great launching pad right there. That was it. Grab the liquidity on the downside in this demand zone and then boom, break towards the upside. That was four days ago. And we got this drop towards the downside, but it fell short of that demand zone and it pivoted back up. And instead what started happening is we consolidate into a triangle formation dead that period right here that you can see from that video. So from that video, we're looking for this drop down into the demand zone and then boom, right there was that perfect entry. Would have been beautiful. Instead, we start to consolidate and we do a triangle. That's when it starts to get a little bit trickier because with triangles, a lot of different things can happen. See, when you get a triangle type of formation from an Elliott wave standpoint, you can always count the triangle in a way which it breaks upwards and a way in which it breaks down. So that's why triangles kind of have more of a 50-50 um, hit rate in regards to them breaking up and breaking down. The other side to this too is that in a triangle, when we break up, there's a lot of internal flat corrections, like a lot of pattern imitation that is going on here. So these become very, very difficult to navigate success, okay? Because we can get a break towards the outside and then this comes back down and what pattern? It's a regular flat or, you know, a running flat. Nothing surprising about that. In the middle here, you can break up, get a false break, smack back down, come back up again, and then do another. And all you're doing is just doing a regular running flat. So internally, there's just a lot of different flats that are going on. You can see these structures over here. Break up, come down, there's our zigzag. This move here could have broken down towards the downside. And when we're contracting like this, we easily could have broken up right here and then smacked back down and then launched again. These are known as liquidity grab traps, and they're also known as expand pockets. And there's a very famous level where expand ejected at, and we've got a really cool strategy for them called liquidity grab. I know, real uh, unique name there, right? So anytime we're dealing with a triangle like this, we just wanna be cautious and know that there's multiple ways in which we can get false breaks towards the upside and slap back. If this is ultimately a very true triangle, then it has to be a B, can't be a wave two or anything else. So the fact that we did consolidate, we can unfortunately break this triangle up into a truncated flat would be acceptable. And I'll show you some of these counts too as we kind of dive into this. Okay, but ultimately that's what we were looking for, right? Was a drop down. That was our trade setup. Shared it with you guys all on YouTube here. And then our last video here came out on uh, Friday, or what, let's see, would have been Wednesday. And this was one day ago, okay? In this video here, uh, we had just started breaking towards the upside. And inside of the Discord, if we go over to the Discord here, I shared this strategy on February 7th at 7.02 a.m. was right 
at the very end of that consolidation break towards the upside. And that is what got us our insanely good risk to reward ratio trade here. Now this was a one to 32 risk to reward ratio trade, meaning if you risked $100, if you're willing to lose $100 on this, you'd be up $3,200 right where Bitcoin is at right now. Said another way, if you're risking 1% of account size, your entire account would have grown 32% in two days and two hours. Pretty cool stuff. But the thing about trading is that throughout that entire two day period, you have all the opportunity where you can decide if you want to mess it up and self-sabotage yourself. And unfortunately, that is something that I ended up doing right here in this trade. And I'm gonna walk you guys through it as well and share with you uh, how I could have done a little bit better, where I messed up on. And if you just stuck to and followed this strategy that I shared in the Discord or even the one on YouTube as well uh, for this move up, because in this video right here, Notice this trade setup that I shared with you guys, where it, once we came up to $45,100, we invalidated the expanded B pocket, meaning we don't get slapped back down. And so at that case, we're just moving straight up into that mark. And so I had a breakout strategy where I planned on sizing up, okay? So that kind of walks us through the whole last week of how we were prepping and getting ready for this big break to 48 and how we nailed an incredibly good risk reward ratio, even better than my original setups and what I was planning. So it was absolutely but I didn't capitalize on the entire move and I did mess it up. And there's some lessons to be learned here for you guys, as well as for myself as well, and how I could have managed this a little bit better. And let me know down in the comments if you guys did end up taking the trade from inside of the Discord and if you stuck through it all the way towards the upside. And if you didn't, let me know where you ended up getting out at and if you also created a little bit of self-sabotage. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into this. We're gonna head and we're gonna look at the way that this is broken down in a couple different ways. So first off, we can have a A, B, W, X, Y, where a triangle is in the Y wave. This is a pretty rare count, but it does show up on occasion. Um, and then the other option is that it's just simply a triangle. Now, with it being a triangle, go A, B, C, D here, we have to go, that's what your triangle looks. Now in both case, you basically end at the same exact area. And what's really nice about a triangle is that you can't go back down underneath your E wave or your D wave. So these are really, really clean and validation spot. So when we zoomed in here and price was, we were on a very small time frame. So first off, the number one trick is that you have to use a multi time frame process. Anytime you want to increase your risk reward ratio, you've got to use a multi time frame process because the whole point of what you're doing is that you're getting a target based off of a height and then you're going down into the smaller time to find your entry and your invalidation. Now, the problem that you run into with this, especially as you're starting out and you're trying to perfect your system and get used to this process of using multiple time frames is that the smaller the time frame, the quicker you invalidate yourself. And so what happens down here in this tight little range is that you might try and take a trade with a stop right there and looking for this huge break towards the upside. So you get an entry, you put a stop right there, and all of a sudden you get just wicked out. And then you've got to, you get the same exact signal, signal again because on the smaller time frame, price engulfed. And whatever your strategy is, the one that we're using here, it would print again. And so you've got to take the strategy again. And so you've really got to master the ability where you can take a loss and get over that loss quick and then exit after taking that loss, knowing that the previous trade has nothing to do with that. So if you're not comfortable with taking losses a few times in a row, then these trades are gonna be very difficult for you and you'd be better off having wider stops and allowing price to move around in there aggressively and get a little chop and still not hit your invalidation. Now this kills your risk reward rate because if you think about the previous trade that I had posted in here, it looked something like this. Okay? So that was the seven days ago. This was the very first trade that I was to nail on this uh, range. So A, C, into it and move up. Now this trade here has risk reward ratio of 3.2 to one. Meaning if you risk $100, you'd make $320 minus fees, okay? And if you risk 1% of account size, you'd be up 3.2% on your account. So obviously, if I'm getting risk reward ratios that are like one to 32, I can afford to take a few hits before I nail that right, okay? But you have gotta be comfortable and know your system and have that confidence as well and in your own ability to continuously execute it because it might take you a few times if you're down there on the time. And when we're dealing with a triangle, there's a lot of whiplash. All of the wave structures are corrective wave struck. All right, so just a little bit of a tip in there that to nail trades with really good risk reward ratio, to master a multi time frame process where you're targeting higher time frame target, you're using smaller time for your int for your stop loss. In order to master that type of a process, come from losses two times in a row before act trade. All right, so what does this mean for Bitcoin now? Well, Actually, before we go there, let's back it up and talk about how I screwed things up. So I've got this insanely good trade and I'm gonna give you guys a couple of insights on the ways that we self-sabotage ourselves, okay? So 
And I'm going to put this into perspective visually for you guys, because if you're anything like me, I'm a, I'm a visual learner personally. And what we're looking for here, I'm going to set up this trade here. Here's my long. All right. And let's get our running flat on there. All right. So here's our trap. Okay. So I actually navigated this trap really well at first. I was pretty proud of myself. So the first thing was here is that I'm going to give you guys a couple tips along the way. So you guys, okay. So First off, with this move here, we always want to know what time frame the markets are, right? So I never limit myself to a certain time frame. I listen to what the time frame, what the market's time frame is working off. So in other words, if this is going to be an A, a B, and a C into the expanded B pocket for a running flat, then my sell signal rate should be the same as my A wave sell signal because they're equal size. They're working on the same time frame. Those degrees are together, right? The degree. So they should work together on the same time frame. So if I just go back here to my A wave and I say, hmm, what was my reversal divergence time frame showing on? And it shows up on a right here, and it shows up on a one hour time frame. Okay, well then I'm going to be looking for a one hour time frame over here too. All right, so I'm on a one hour time frame right now. Notice the reversal divergence over here. Okay, showed up in the A wave. Same here. There's my reversal divergence. Now I go over here, and as we come into that expanded B pocket, I'm only interested in it actually looking like a sell place. If over here, see this. If I have one hour divergence right in my pocket, and notice that we don't. Okay, price is actually showing strength by squeezing through my 1.23 pocket here, and it's coming up to 1.382, and I don't have reversal divergence yet. Okay, but then I do get reversal divergence over. So we get popped up right there, and now I've got a reversal divergence. So at that point, what I ended up doing was I was just like, oh, you know what? This is likely going to be wave one of my five wave towards the upside. I said, because it is in the B wave pocket. So I do want to protect myself about to slap down. So I have two, two ways that I'm looking. So I'm saying this can be a wave one, two, three, four, five. Okay, up to 48K. One, two, three, four, five. Well, the wave two still pulls back here. I've got my reversal divergence. So I've got my reversal divergence of the top of a wave one. So either we're pulling back for a wave two and continuing up, which probability has increased to that because we've gone so high up into my expanded B pop. The other option is that this is my B wave and we're about to slap all the way back. And this is my trade setup. So again, risking 1% of account size at this point in time, the account is up 8.5%, okay? So pretty pretty freaking decent in a, let's give you a time frame, right? okay? And about 21 hours. So pretty pretty decent uh, move here where, where things are going up. And what that can do is that we all have like a money limit or a financial limit or a success limit in regards to like where, when our thermostat is turned up pretty heavy and we're feeling really, really, really good, how long can you stay in that emotion of feeling really, really good, okay? And you guys could all do a little exercise and even test it out, but I'd be curious to know where you, you could figure it out for yourself on where your limits are at, right? How much is too much money in regards to feeling good about? And some of you guys are gonna have really high limits and others are gonna actually feel pretty low, but you can tell when it happens when you start to come in and start to sabotage yourself a little bit, okay? Things are, you're making a ton of money, you don't wanna lose it, et cetera. Your brain starts picking up on those um, thoughts and so forth. And so if you're just being aware and paying attention to it, you'll notice when you start to actually reach your. So in this territory here, I had technical reasons that I was looking at. I was like, okay, it counts up really good here. I don't want to screw this up. Like if this thing draws down, that's going to be painful if I give back a majority of my profits that I've got here. It's a pretty fat trade setup. And so at that point, why well, opened up a short hedge. And now this was following another strategy. So I'm not going against my system. My execution here is exactly what it should. And this is my other strategy setup. So this is called liquidity grab strategy for expanded B waves. So I figure, well, the, the signal's printing there. I've got all the signals for this other strategy. So I'll just open it up at the same time and hedge. So now my, my profits are net neutral in this. So if I go up and I invalidate the B wave, that brings us back to our video that I posted one day ago, right here, where I'd look for sizing up into that strength because we've invalidated that B wave. That is where I messed up my plan, is that I did not size up. And instead, because of this stop getting triggered here, I still thought, and I got too overly specific about managing this, that I had reversal divergence again right here. And so I thought I'd still pull back for this. And so what I ended up doing was exiting my long here at the same time that my short um, stop loss got. So again, no, net neutral in this range here, no, no profit being made at all, okay? And I get out of my short and I get out of my long with the expectation that this was gonna pull back 
and I get into another strategy of mine for that continuation upside. And instead, it starts running without me. And I'm like, all right, crap, this looks like it's gonna be a flat. So here's my running flat. And so I set up another strategy right here to get ready to enter into this move with a stop underneath this low. And that's another strategy of mine called last bite strategy. Hence the name last bite is that you're trying to catch the last move before it ends, okay? And so those signals were starting. Instead, what happened is that it pivoted off of a 0.618 instead of my one. So I was targeting, and all that means is that it's extreme anytime it's 618 instead of, and that's so an absolutely beautiful for those that stuck to it and didn't touch it, try and hedge or mess with it or do anything around this terror. You guys killed it and you made a 32 to one reward to risk ratio. So congrats, because those are pretty rare to find um, to that magno, even using a multi time frame process, still being you know, one to 10, one to 20 risk reward ratio trade, but one to 30 and one to 30 plus. Um, is pretty so that is how everything unraveled for me this week you guys uh, volatility up here is great there's a lot of good scalping day trades up in this here across alts that are going on and I think as we move into the weekend probably see Bitcoin scale off and go sideways here um, and we'll see alts and probably a little bit of catch so I think more activity will alts rather than you see again BTC is famous for just going sideways over the weekend okay and the bigger macro picture of what's coming into play here is because we're coming into a pretty pivotal spot right I was projecting C towards the upside so that's now going to bring us into the most recent analysis and the updates here that I've got guys and let me know down in the comments you guys if you ended up catching any trades out of this triangle caught the break towards the upside did you do a breakout strategy well how exactly did you capitalize on this move and if you missed it let me know if you missed it or if you ended up sabotaging it somewhere along the way and got out too early all right so a couple things that you guys can hopefully learn from me um, I, you know my takeaways as well is that ultimately I stuck to my system regardless of the strategies there was good discipline there but where I did mess up was that uh, because I was in such good profits and I wanted to avoid giving back any of those profits, I opened up a head short, again, following my strategic about it. But my mistake was that I exited the long when my short triggered, my short stop loss triggered, when really my original plan was to size up in my short. And I didn't do that because of reversal divergence on the one hour time frame. And I thought I could get the pullback for the wave two. But when you go back and you look at it, that pullback on wave two, pretty small pennies in regards. So at that point, I should have just allowed any sort of a wave two drawback occur and used it as an up, up, okay? So those are my takeaways on this, you guys. And as we move in to the next stage of Bit overall, because obviously the analysis has been really on point, and that was a really sweet trade too. I mean, there was a ton of money, eight and a half percent on account size. I'll take it, it's not 32%, but uh, still a good chunk of money. And what we can expect, or what I'm expecting next moving forward here is gonna be this ABC now leads into another a C. All right. So why is this the case? Why are we going to literally engulf more than what was the upside? Well, the argument here is that this move is being correct. And because it's being corrected, uh, we need a longer leg than just that. So in other words, that's too short in time and not a very healthy retracement for this to just completely rampage up towards the upside. If we're not doing an ABC here, then my argument is going to be that we're actually doing one, two, three, four, five. And I think we'll just sweep the highs with an impulse and then look for a larger correction. So I would prefer to have a B wave here than a, f and the reason for that is that we create a better base here. And that base is likely at that not third wave, but instead a wave one, two, and we can still be intact with our, what that means you got, if we zoom out here to four day time frame. look at this bigger pick. Okay, we've got the macro where we're looking at it. One, two, one, three, four, five, four. All right, so that's your big massive, uh, that ever, right? We all make a ton off of that. And argue this wave two would be the best buying opportunity for that. All right, so the fact that we've moved right in 48 quality, has a, there's a lot of imitation there that it's an ABC. Now, how will it not be seen? Well, over the weekend, we're gonna likely con consolidate some. And when Monday comes, Comes, we should look for this to distribution pattern for us to break back towards. And if it isn't a distribution pattern, it's going to be an accumulation pattern. They look very, very similar to each other. And in that accumulation pattern, we're actually going to break upwards, do a three, another four, five. And that's what the five weeks. So I'm going to zoom back into that. I'll get rid of the brush, draw the actual one, two, three. So over the weekend, we get some this, two, three, fourth wave over the weekend. And then we continue. So that's how this would turn into an impulse instead. Of, so come Monday, what we want to see is we want to see this break downwards and come back into our previous wave one territory, at which point we know that that's an impulse. And that once we break into this range and we actually break under 42,500, now we have 100% that we're connected. Okay? So when Bitcoin goes into fourth wave, 
waves or when it consolidates, all to play catch or outperform big performance. So this would be a prime time since Bitcoin led this rally to have our over the on alts if we want to cap these. And Bitcoin, you're probably going to end up giving back profits or giving back money altogether if you're trying to navigate inside of a consolidation zone. But I'll probably have a little opportunity because they handle going off on their own a little bit, especially some of the more major ones uh, and play catch up because a lot of them got left behind towards the upside, right? They kind of underperformed in that initial breakup. And now they're playing catch up. Now we're seeing some good gains on all four hours. Here. Um, and I expect that in team. Since this is an area for short interest, uh, I'm going to wait until next week on Monday for the actual short opportunities here. Now, it would be too early to try and look at shorts and expecting a hard rejection back towards the downside. Um, I'm most likely waiting for bigger players from that rather than expecting a rejection like that. Uh, let me know down in the comments, you guys, if you if you think this is gonna turn impulsive here and you think we're gonna end up breaking towards the upside with a five wave, or if you think it'll actually contain an ABC and we're gonna get rejected back down to around 38K. If you guys got value out of this video and you learned a few things today, then make sure to smash up that like button and share this video out on other platforms, discords that you're a part of, or Facebook groups that you're a part of as well to help push this out to the easiest way that you can help support this channel. And I appreciate your time today as well. Much love, fam. Take care. Have a great week.